Um, good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, actually, I wanted to thank Robin and Shish for uh, touching on this topic because I'm actually kind of proposing one solution to solving some of these uh, problems they talk about in terms of contentions and and wireless media interferences. Um, so my talk today is going to be on uh, dynamic transmission range um, for IVC vehicles uh, on the particular area of what I call stop and go traffic, which is a common phenomenon that we see on highways. So the brief outline here, and uh, I think I'll just start with a little bit of motivation, and I think probably a lot of people in this room are already familiar with why we're interested in starting this topic of vehicle communications. Um, obviously, it's got a lot of benefits in terms of um, the cost that it goes on to transportation mobilities, in terms of safety, um, we can see that in the U.S. there are about 40,000 deaths every year, and this is actually comparable in Europe and actually even higher in, in Asia um, due to the population ratios. Um, also, there's uh, issues with congestions, and you're losing a lot of cost and time, and so I think definitely this is an area that needs to look at carefully. And uh, this is actually a direct statement taken from the U.S. DOT um, research in uh, Innovation Technology Administration talking about trying to reduce crashes by 90% in the year 2030. So I think definitely this is an area that uh, we need to look at carefully as uh, engineers and scientists in this area. Um, so to introduce um, this topic area of uh, inter communications, um, we can look at the applications. Um, obviously, safety comes in mind for a lot of people. Um, but besides safety, there's you know, uh, applications with environmental impact. Now, this might not seem very direct at the beginning, but if you think about adaptive cruise control, you think about fuel efficiency, if you can control the stability of traffic, you can actually reduce the pollution of vehicles on the road. Um, the other one is obviously improve road safety. Um, and then I think to look at in this context is that you have unique characteristics in the mobility models of the way that vehicles are moving on the road, uh, the, the way that the network is designed, which is basically governed by uh, vehicles moving on highways and arterial roads, and um, that this network is constantly changing from a dense to a sparse network depending on different time of the day, depending on where the road is located. And so uh, if we just see on the figure on the right, um, the difference is these mobile ad hoc networks traditionally uh, can move in a more random manner while in VNet uh, or the vehicular ad hoc network environment, they're actually moving based on uh, what uh, network they're in, whether they're in the highway, whether they're in arterial road, and based on their speed and safety distance between the car in front of them. So our work here and our contributions is um, we, um, we're looking at safety applications and we're looking at broadcasting, um, particularly with data dissemination. Uh, we're trying to achieve these uh, high communication reliability and efficiency. And I think uh, reliability is hard to achieve and as well at the same time having it both make it efficient. Uh, and we, we do this uh, on the uh, by adjusting the transmission range of these vehicles. And uh, typically in a you know, mobile environment, you, in a, let's say in a, in a WLAN environment, uh, you can have about 100 meters outdoor transmission range. But in this vehicular environment, because the network is constantly changing, what we're really interested in is how we can actually optimize this network um, by adjusting its power between the vehicles so that they can improve their reliability. Uh, one of our earlier work here was on shockwave um, traffic. So a shockwave traffic would be on your highway, you might have two different fleets of vehicles, you know, and um, if they go in different speed, eventually if the, the, the fleet of vehicles behind are traveling at a higher speed, they're gonna catch up to the fleet in front and they're gonna be a sudden break um, of the traffic. And so this is, a con this is a, actually a common phenomenon that happens with shockwaves where these uh, high speed reductions happen in the highway. Uh, but in this work, uh, what I'm more interested in presenting is another phenomenon on highways, which is stop and go. And you can think of it stop and go as if you're driving on a highway in a, in a dense network, you're basically kind of putting your 
you kind of step on, on, on the gas and then you're braking. You step on the gas and you're braking. You're constantly having this feedback me mechanism um, on the highway. Uh, some of the related works I want to highlight here, um, people that have proposed in terms of adjusting the uh, dynamic transmission range, uh, they've looked at ways to adjust by estimating your local density um, and also the local traffic conditions. And I do want to point out that our approach is a bit different from theirs. Is there was more of a pure analytical model and we actually uh, took a step forward to look at some of the simulations results uh, based on this scheme of a dynamic transmission range. Uh, the other work on uh, the second part is on uh, where they try to balance this concept of uh, transmit power between periodic versus even driven messages. And um, so they're just kind of trying to find the optimal point in, in, in this network where they're trying to um, have both messages that are being sent periodically and messages that are being sent even driven. That can be more perhaps emergency uh, messages. So, um, to look at the stop and go waves here, uh, so as I talked, it's a general phenomenon in highways. Uh, and we're here, again, we're assuming that all vehicles are IVC or uh, intervehicle communication based, meaning they have all communication capabilities. Um, they're obviously on a non uniform, congested traffic manner. And we uh, put in some realistic numbers, these are actually gathered from real field results of free flow speed, uh, around 60,000 mile hour. Uh, your jam spacing, which is uh, the, the average uh, vehicle length, and then the time gap, which is the reaction time that you can, um, a, a driver might react to some instance in front. Um, and, the, and you can see that um, we derive our vehicle trajectories based on these micro simulation car fine models. And this is one of the common ones, it's called Norville de Genzo car fine model where you can feed in these parameters and you can actually derive the trajectories or, or the actual traffic waves that can actually happen. Um, so our derivation of this vehicular pattern is based on these uh, well study micro simulation models. And, and the figure on the right here is showing an actual uh, stop and go away for a density of 45 vehicles per kilometer. And we can see here, uh, if you, see where the, it's a, the lines were actually clawed together. It's when actually the vehicles are approaching a stop scenario. And then once they're actually stepping on the gas again, then they're actually going more free fall again. So it's this concept of on the highway, you can have these phenomenon that actually happens. And if you look at the real data, you actually will see these occurrences as well. And so what is the technique that we're trying to propose here is that we actually are adjusting this transmission range um, based on characteristic of this traffic. And we're based on this, what we call the coefficient of, of um, variation of vehicle spacing. Uh, because ultimately, uh, when you're trying to adjust the transmission range, you're really concerned <coughs> about the spacing of your network, of your vehicles. You know, how far is the vehicle in front of you? How far is the vehicle in the back of you? Um, and, but these are constantly changing. And so what we really want to study was in this whole environment of this whole network, what is the difference of spacing of all vehicles? And this gives us an idea um, um, of you know, how the, the real variation really that's going on, the spacing. Um, and so what we do is actually we adjust the transmission range based on this coefficient or variation uh, based on the factor of the order of magnitude and based on the average um, vehicle spacing. So what we did was um, we actually tried to find what is the optimal transmission range uh, on a stop and go traffic um, that behaves differently depending on your density um, because you have different um, vehicle spacing and then we're trying to figure out what's, what, in what scenarios would actually give you the highest reliability. And so we actually, and um, using the formulation earlier of the traffic waves, we actually um, generate these traffic scenarios of different densities in our network. And to couple that with, I think Robert touched a basis about connectivity, and basically this is, you know, I, I, I call it coverage, but it's basically the concept of connectivity of um, 
the vehicles um, that are connected to you in front and also the video connected to you in the, in the back. Because um, I think it, it, it's important that when we compute this measure, we, we have to compute measure only on the vehicles that you can reach um, to. So we have to kind of consider this coverage as we're looking at the reliability issue. So here's just a, a here just a, a kind of two figures to show you what is actually happening in a stop and go wave. Uh, the figure on the on the left is an initial condition um, from time zero to time one twenty for a density of thirty, and then the figure on the right is for a density of seventy five. And uh, what I can explain is from the time zero is when you have a random distribution of vehicles. So the vehicles are just joining the highway and they're just randomly distributed. As time progresses, then they start to form this formation of stop and go waves. And that's when you see a difference in the phenomena of the behavior of the traffic. And we can clearly see that these adjustment schemes actually um, have a big impact on the coverage. Um, and typically, uh, it's it's reasonable to say that if you have a larger transmission, uh, transmission adjustment, you are going to achieve coverage that exceeds your average spacing over time. Because as over time, what happens is the vehicle spacing actually converges more and more. And so that actual coverage value actually increases. While if you, if you go for this kind of smaller transmission range adjustment scheme, uh, it could be very uh, happen where your transmission is actually less than your average spacing of vehicles, and in that case, your coverage goes down. So this becomes a, a trade-off scheme depending on the stability of your um, traffic, um, whether you do a large or whether you do a, do a small adjustment scheme. Uh, here's just kind of a, a, some tables to kind of articulate this a little bit better, what the actual numbers will look like. Uh, these M01234 are the coefficient variances, how much, how much of that formulation you're adding to your transmission range based on the formula here. And we can see that um, typically um, the stationary traffic is when the, the vehicles are behaving or persisting going to the stop and go wage. They actually require a smaller transmission rate adjustment as an initial random distribution when the spacing is more dynamic. And then similarly, um, higher density vehicles also um, favors um, smaller transmission range adjustments because higher density, the vehicles are more clotted, and so their ability to have bigger spacing actually reduces their ability to have these more dynamic spacing. So our simulation, we actually use NS2 simulator. Um, and we actually incorporated the 802.11p parameters into our simulation environment. Um, we took some uh, realistic 802.11p configurations. Uh, we set a data rate of six megabits per second. Um, and then we also set a periodic broadcast of 100 milliseconds, which is a typical number and defined at the SRC standard. And we um, for this experiment, we basically are dynamically adjusting our transmission power for the different uh, traffic characteristics. So we actually, well, the way we computed this, we actually computed, uh, we just call a weighted packet reception rate of the um, reception and that's feedback by the simulator multiplied by the coverage to give us a, an actual estimate. Because if, if there's no coverage, you won't get any reception at all. So here is uh, the packet reception with coverage for the initial randomized traffic for different densities. Uh, we're seeing here that you can probably get up around, and on average, um, if you go beyond uh, two coefficient or variation adjustment, you can achieve somewhere around 60% of reliability. Um, now, and then probably the optimal point is at the case where you're around adjusting two magnitude, two orders of magnitude to your coefficient of variation. Because if you adjust too much, then you have more interference with your neighboring vehicles that we might have some packet drop. So it's really trying to find what is the sweet spot in this network. And then 
where as density increases, um, the kind of more optimal point in the general consensus, I feel is around the three to four magnitude adjustment scheme. Um, and this is uh, mostly because here is in a higher density scenario, um, the actual adjustment numbers are actually smaller. And uh, so the increasing the magnitude actually doesn't really impact too much of the interference. And actually, this number is also similar in terms of the stationary when the vehicles are going to a stop and go traffic as well. So I think in conclusion, um, the summary is that we can see that the mobility movement is actually um, highly impact the performance of IVC uh, vehicles. And we propose a scheme of dynamically changing your transmission range depending on the traffic network. Um, and so some of our conclusions here that I've talked about is the optimal point, uh, low density around two to, three, two to three magnitude of your coefficient of variance, coefficient of variation, and for high density, around three to four coefficient of variation. So um, I think this idea is to formulate this concept of tra uh, dynamic transmission and really can benefit uh, your communication reliability.